Is it not an art to deceive a trout with an artificial fly? A trout is more sharp-sighted than the hawk. Doubt not, therefore, that angling is an art, one well worth learning. Angling is somewhat like poetry. Both may be heightened by discourse and practice. He that hopes to angling must bring an inquiring, searching, observing wit, and a large measure of hope and patience. Hail and well met, Sir Venator. Fortunate meeting, Master Gastropod. The sun has risen, and the dogs have just put down an otter. Where found you this otter, gentlemen Venator? Mary, sir, we found her a mile from this place a-fishing, and she has this morning eaten the greatest part of a trout. I am to have the skin if we kill her. Why, what is the skin of the otter worth? The gloves made of otter are the best fortification against wet weather, and his stones are good for the falling sickness. Tell me, when you hunt the otter, is it a beast or a fish that you hunt? Leave such questions to the College of Carthusians, where it hath been debated among the great clocks. Most agree that his tail is fish, but if his body be fish, then a fish may walk on land. Albeit the otter devours much trout, and kills and spoils many more. My fortune has answered my desires to destroy some of these villainous vermin. I hate them perfectly, for they destroy so many trout! As you say, sir, but I must away. Hail and well met, gentlemen Piscator. The Romans, in the height of their glory, made fish the mistress of all their entertainments. They have had music to usher in their sturgeons, lampreys, and mullets, purchased at rates rather to be wondered at than believed. Our story begins on West 4th Street, at the storefront of a local fishmonger. Here you are, sir. Your chicken of the sea. Hello, fishmonger. I wish to purchase your wares. What are you even talking about? The fish, fine fellow. The bounty of the seas. Gross. Have you ever touched a fish? They're like all slimy and stuff. <laughs> Indeed, my fine fellow. Once, when I was young, bright-eyed, and ready to take on the world. I wouldn't touch a fish if you paid me. I will pay you, my lad. Touch your own fish. <laughs> my dear lad, would but I could, and should if I would. Hi, it's Betty. I'm like totally calling you on the phone or whatever. Lo, fishmonger, I wish to purchase your wares. 
there's this guy here and he like expects me to put a fish in a bag. Uh, uh, fishmonger? <laughs> he totally looks like a fish eater. Hold on. Are you going to eat that fish? Indeed, my fine fellow. A hearty meal of trout and parsnips. He's totally gonna eat this fish. Yeah, apparently I'm like some sort of fishmonger now or something. He's all like, you work in a fish shop, so sell me fish. And I'm all like, fish are gross. I, I wish to purchase your wares. Oh my god, that sounds perfect. And then after that, we can have grande lattes and biscotti and bruschetta and kombucha. Touch your own gross fish. I've got a date at the Grimmaid Gallery, an exhibit on the pre-postmodern neo-romantic distigial painters during the early to mid-turn of the century from the Dutch Indies. And it's not a romantic date. We're just exceptionally close friends. Hello, fishmonger. I wish to purchase your wares. I like totally needed this. Work was a super negative experience. <laughs> Tlula, is this a Monet? It says it's Monet. I knew it was a Monet. You see how it looks a bit like a Manet? Oh yeah, around the... No, no, there. Oh. You see, a Monet always kind of looks like a Manet. That's how you can totally tell it's a Monet, like hardcore. Betty, something about that sounds not right. Tallulah, please. I watched that entire Netflix series on the history of art, and let me tell you, it was hard. I was even falling asleep the whole time. It was so serious, but I so watched it all. Then how can you tell a Manet? Does a Manet look like a Monet? Oh golly, Tallulah, really? Of course not. A Manet looks like a Manet. That's why it's a Manet. A Manet looks like a Manet. Naturally. A Manet looks like a Manet, and a Monet looks like a Manet. What if... What if you saw a Monet and got the name confused with Monet, and then you thought that Monet had a similar style to Manet? You mean just, like, confuse the names? Maybe? That seems, like, super unlikely or whatever. They're hardly similar, even a little bit. They both start with M. Mm, technically, just, like, barely even. I'm so settling this. I'm calling Shirley. Shirley, listen. You know Monet the painter, and you know Manet the other painter? Are those names similar? Yeah, well, sure, but, but, no, I'm with Betty now, and, well, I really don't see why an otter would be necessary. Oh, I see. Bye. Well, gee, Shirley says you're right. She says they hardly sound alike at all. Oh, it's okay. You do your best. <laughs> Now, see that Moreau? Oh. I can tell it's a Moreau because it looks a bit like a Nevelson. Just there, around the... Oh yes, around the... Around the trousers, yes. <laughs> you can tell a Moreau because it looks like a Nevelson. A Nevelson looks like a Noland. A Noland looks like an O'Keefe. An O'Keefe looks like an Olitsky. An Olitsky looks like it's a... It's surely... Yes? Oh my goodness. Yes? Oh. Shirley says Olitsky and O'Keefe aren't alike at all. Really? Oh my goodness! Betty! Betty, Shirley says Olitsky and O'Keefe aren't alike at all. She says Jules Olitsky is a master of abstraction using bold colors and spray paints and acrylics. And Georgia O'Keefe painted massive impressionist works focusing on flowers and female sensuality. Shirley also says you're dissing me. Dissing you? Low-key dissing me. I don't do anything low-key. I do it all the way or not at all. Somewhere in between if it's inconsequential. You're low-key dissing me. Oh, what does Shirley know about art anyway? I was speaking of their essence, of the truest, true sense of their work. To an uneducated rube like Shirley, Olitsky and O'Keefe may be light years apart, but any discerning connoisseur can see the kinship beneath the paltry surface attributes. Oh, look, it's a Gregson. Gregson? 
Yes, a Gregson. A Gregson. Yes, he's that new one. Hmm. I liked his early period. Where was I? The O's. An Oldenburg looks like a Popova. Popova looks like a Poisson dart. A Poisson dart looks like a Rochenberg. And a Rochenberg looks like a... Hey! Are you just listing artists alphabetically? Like, what do you mean? Well, Nolan, O'Keefe, Oldenburg, Popova, Poison Dart, Rosenberg. Technically, they're alphabetical. Technically, L-M-N-O-P. Lula, please. I was speaking of their essence, of the truest true truth, not some arbitrary label. Yes, but P does come after O, and O comes after N. Well, perhaps it does. Who can say? Uh, excuse me. Do you know where the linotype exhibit is? No, I've told you already. We're just exceptionally close friends. <sighs> How can you tell a Reinhardt? A Reinhardt looks like a Renoir, of course. And a Renoir looks like a Rodin. And a Rodin looks Hold like on. How can a Renoir look like a Rodin? Tallulah, you're so ignorant. You really are. Their brush strokes are almost identical. But Rodin's a sculptor. He doesn't have brush strokes. Well, chisel strokes then. But my point still stands. A Rodin looks like a Rosa Nova. A Rosa Nova looks like a Rothko. A Rothko looks half like a Rothenberg and half like a Rousseau. A Rousseau looks like a Rusha, a Ryder, and the Rid of Velasco all swirled up together. Something about that sounds not right. A Tanaka looks like a Bradley Walker Tomlin. A Bradley Walker Tomlin looks like a Herman Melville. A Melville. Melville was a novelist. His magnum opus, Moby Dick, wasn't well received upon initial release and it wasn't until the 19... No! I've told you, we're just exceptionally close friends. I was speaking of their essence and of their brush strokes. But pen strokes? Oh. It's Shirley again. Mm. Tallulah, listen, she's low-key dissing you. She's totally low-key dissing you hardcore. She says you're totally low-key dissing me. Oh, come on. I want a grande latte, and a biscotti, and bruschetta, and kumbacha, and kombucha. Shirley, I don't want to hear anything about Alice Acock. Tallulah, that's crazy. Alice Acock is the most innovative sculptor of the 20th century. Oh, one minute. It's Betty and Tallulah. Her work shows the paranoia of humanity with hints of a transcendent proto-religious religiosity. Tallulah, think about it. How are you going to get where you're going? How am I going to get there? I think it might just be a big disappointment. If it's a free ride, well then, a free ride is all we can afford. This is turning bad. Here, watch this. Don't even get me started on George Bellows. Who keeps painting realism into the 20th century? Hi, welcome to Gavin and Susan Gregson, Second Row Balcony. Tonight's movie is I Like Like You, starring Dana Murphy and Alan Price. As you can see, I've made some changes. I got this magnificent backdrop, and a potted plant is always nice. Gavin's not here. He's still sulking. I don't have a clip for this week's movie, but if Dana Murphy's in it, it must be good. Oh, I like that Dana Murphy. Since I don't have a clip, let me tell you a story that happened to me once. I was in such a hurry for the osteopath, and I was running late. As I parked, I realized... No change for the meter. Gavin had taken it all, the stinker. I was all a panic. And then I noticed there was still 45 minutes already on it. Patty? That's quite a story. Yes, I know. Suspenseful, but with a twist at the end. Now you go. Well, one time I was driving home 
and I had like mechanical problems or whatever. Oh my golly. I was sitting in my car and far ahead of me, I saw this small round light bobbing its way through the trees. I was sure it was a ghost. <gasps> I was totally creeped out and it got bigger and bigger and closer and I was like freaking out. Oh my golly. And then the light came closer and then I realized it was just a guy driving. And then he passed me. He didn't stop, but at least I knew it wasn't a ghost. Unless it was a ghost driving. <sighs> totally freaked me out. That's completely true. Mostly. Until next week, I'm Susan Gregson and Patty. And this is Second Row Balcony, Balcony. People have eaten it. I don't even have to do any research to know that's true. Fact. Nothing looks quite so ludicrous as a grown man chasing a ping pong ball. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How long does it take your toaster to toast toast? If you said 45 seconds, you're wrong. Toasters don't toast toast. People with toasters toast toast. Although technically, you don't toast toast, you toast bread. Fact, common table salt is only one electron away from a compound, which if you ate it, it would blow you up. Excuse me while I take a moment of quiet reflection. Darkness falls as the tempest rises through the meandering halls of ephemera. I came here for merriment and festivities, and what do I find? Not even a Battenberg cake. Bane and burden, scourge and plague. Why couldn't the narwhal find his way home? Because he was clinically depressed. They say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. But what about otters? They don't make you stronger, uh, unless you eat them. And they don't kill you, unless they attack en masse. That was an unfruitful line of inquiry. What does a clock do when it's hungry? It goes back four seconds. Fact, you can't sneeze without closing your eyes, which is why taping your eyelids open provides such effective relief. Fact, we are all time travelers, traveling into the future at the rate of one minute per minute. And let me ask you this. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it provided a convenient premise on which to hang an anticlimactic denouement. Call me a morally depraved nihilist, but that's why it's a classic.